Genesis 6, 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. The corruption of all flesh, the destruction of God's animal kingdom, if you will. When one takes a look at the path that humanity is headed towards, it, it really is alarming to see how God's creation is being utterly destroyed, utterly destroyed from the beautiful animals he created to the beautiful humans he created. All is being changed, all is being modified, and Exodus 34, 14, For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Yet humanity, as time has passed, it's worshiping itself. It's worshiping itself. Technology is advancing at a rate that it is now creating possibilities that you can even turn your actual dreams into watchable movies. Satan wants to be as God. Satan is not omnipresent. Satan is a created thing. Satan is defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Yet via technology, he is attempting that omnipresence. He is attempting to become God. And these technologies allow Satan an insight into the human being that he wouldn't have otherwise. But man is always being tempted. Tempted to want to live longer. According to this article, U.S. scientists are growing human organs inside farm animals like sheep and pigs. In research that could one day save the lives of people in need of organ donations. According to the MIT Technology Review, around 20 animals have been impregnated with human-animal hybrids at a number of universities in the last year. None of these hybrids have been born, but the technology used to create them is currently in development. The chimeras are created by injecting human stem cells into an animal embryo. In order to meet the demand for livers, hearts, and other organs desperately needed by transplant patients, scientists are now experimenting with growing them inside animals. These so-called human-animal hybrids are made by adding human stem cells to pig and sheep embryos. Once they become fully grown, scientists hope to transfer the organs to patients without transplant rejection because the organs carry human DNA. If successful, it would save lives of people who are on donor waiting lists, and hundreds of people on those lists died in this country last year. Joining us now, Dr. Dimitri Alden, a surgeon at Lenox Hill Hospital uh, specializing in organ transplant, and Aaron Cariotti, a psychiatrist and director of the University of California at Irvine Medical School's Medical Ethics Program. A welcome to both of you. Dr. Alden, let me let me start with you. This is very technical stuff, obviously. Can you kind of boil down for us how it works? First, you have to manipulate the, the genes in the animal to accept the human cells, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's extremely complex stuff. But uh, what it boils down, that's imagining editing a Microsoft Word document. You put a cursor where you want it, uh, text to be deleted, and then you just press backspace or delete and you eliminate certain genes and that's what is done with the animal's DNA and that's what scientists have been able to do lately is that they can erase portion of the DNA of the animal eliminating certain organs, tissues such as muscle or blood vessels so next they insert uh, human pluripotent or uh, stem cells what we call them and ho in hoping that the stem cells will take over uh, the missing part and will insert themselves into the missing sentence of that Word document, so, so to speak. So sticking with you for the moment, Dr. Alden, have we actually accomplished this? I mean, have we, have we managed to develop or grow a transplantable liver or a heart, for instance, inside an animal? Well, this is still work in progress, and it's not new. It's been done, it's been done and tried since late 1980s, 90s. But now, 
the new technology and new scientific discoveries enabled us to erase the portion of that animal DNA and insert human DNA. And now we're hoping that the organs can be grown. But so far, only fetuses have been made in animals. The animals have been sacrificed for studying. And so far, no organs, actual organs, have been produced. Dr. Cariotti, let's talk about the ethics of all this. What are some of the questions that, that even the scientific community is raising here? Sure, so the questions don't have to do with the, the ends that we are going after. Surely if we had more organs to save the lives of those on transplant lists, everyone would agree that that's a good thing. The question really has to do with the means toward that end. And so much of the research that's been done in this area is currently a giant question mark. There's not been a single peer-reviewed paper in a scientific journal that's been published on this research. So what we know is based on what a few scientists have said when they presented their work at, uh, at conferences and so forth. The NIH has actually banned this research, so it's not currently being funded uh, by the federal government. In California, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine is funding this, so a lot of the work that you're seeing is coming out of California. And I think the real question is, what kind of animal are we actually producing when we do this sort of work. We're inserting human stem cells into, a, let's say, a pig fetus or a sheep, a pig embryo or a sheep embryo and allowing it to, to develop, hoping that those human cells are go going to grow into just the organ that we need, the kidney or the liver or whatever, because we've knocked out the genes responsible for that organ yeah, so, in the so, animal. So you, you grow, say, a human heart inside of a sheep, and then if you need the heart for transplant, you kill the sheep, take the heart, and, and try to save a human life? Exactly. That's the idea precisely. But we, we know so little about embryonic development and fetal development. It is immensely complicated. And we really don't know if the human cells that we're injecting in there are going to grow only into a heart or only into a kidney or whether they might grow into, let's say, contributing to the brain tissue of the pig. Are we going to get a pig that's capable of much higher intellectual or cognitive functioning mm. than an ordinary pig would be? And that seems rather ethically troubling to a lot of people who think about the human-animal hybrid or chimera. Exactly what, what are we creating here? So they're hoping that in injecting human cells into an animal that they can create organs, right? And they can create livers and they can create kidneys that are human-like. But what is going to happen when you create a hybrid? What if the human cell affects the brain of that pig, the brain of that sheep? Do not be fooled, they know what they are doing just as with the homosexual sodomy movement. You are going to see it in the next 20-30 years. Human-animal hybrids and they'll fight for their rights just as they fought for homosexuality which is an abomination. None of these things simply come to pass. Sodomy didn't become legalized overnight. These are baby steps and they always fool you with vain philosophy, with vain teachings, with vain words. Let's take a look at the Zika virus. The Zika virus, the mosquito. They always tell you how all of these modifications on animals are for your benefit, right? They're for your benefit. We are now witnessing that the Zika virus is actually even spread via sexual relations. Babies are being born utterly destroyed. And the answer? Let's modify mosquitoes so that that way you can be safe. What if the key to combating the Zika virus is more mosquitoes? But not just any mosquitoes, genetically modified mosquitoes. I know, when you think of GMOs, you probably think about giant strawberries, tomatoes, or apples. But some scientists are saying GMO mosquitoes could hold the cure. RT's Anya Parampil explains. Brazil has announced its National Biosafety Committee has approved multiple releases of a genetically modified version of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Their goal is to stop the spread of Zika virus through using GMO mosquitoes, which carry a self-destructing mechanism, releasing them into the wild and allowing them to mate with Zika-infected mosquitoes. The Zika mosquitoes will then be infected with the self-destructing gene and die off.
The deadly mosquitoes were developed by British company Oxitec, which has manipulated the genes of mosquitoes to fight diseases such as dengue fever by killing off the bugs before they reach adulthood. Proponents of the GMO insects say it is possible to target specific species with the die-offs and that their use is safer than traditional pesticides. However, others worry that in such an interconnected ecosystem, one small change, let alone a drastic reduction in the population of mosquitoes, could have unknown and unintended consequences. Let's take a look at the main company that is telling you to buy their genetically modified mosquitoes. Their name is Oxitec. Well, one British biotech firm is using its expertise to contain the disease and it's turning to genetic modification. Oxitec is mating sterile male mosquitoes with virus carrying females and early results are promising. I spoke to the CEO, Hayden Parry, about the possibilities and pitfalls of his approach. It works in the area in which you work, so it's very controlled um, and it's extraordinarily effective. So in all our trials, we've reduced the population by over 90% um, these, in a very short space of time. Now these trials have predominantly been in Brazil. So what are some of the initial results that you're seeing so far? Oxitec actually, before you saw all of this outbreak when it comes to the Zika, and you saw how it spread now to different countries. Previously to that, the Zika was a controlled mosquito. Understand that a lot of these mosquitoes they're already genetically created in laboratories around the world in addition to that a lot of these mosquitoes are plagues that the Bible actually speaks of but then when you mix in genetically modified mosquitoes you have utter destruction you have utter death in 2015 long before any of these Zika situation that you're having worldwide the company Oxitec released and helped the Brazilian government with their modif genetically modified mosquitoes. What do we have now in 2016? An even bigger outbreak, an even bigger way that these mosquitoes have now turned into bigger hybrids. Look, who, look at who's tied here with Oxitec, Bill Gates. Bill Gates introduces Mosquito Week on his personal blog, The Gates Notes. In his blog, he goes on to give examples. Death by the number of animals, essentially. Elephants, 100. Hippopotamus, 500. Crocodile, 1,000. Tapeworm, 2,000. And so forth. Human atrocities, 475,000. Mosquitoes, 725,000. So, what is he promoting? That you take in this GMO mosquitoes. What is going to happen when these mosquitoes, which are not made by God, these are corrupted mosquitoes, abominations, if you will, bite a human being. According to them, these mosquitoes, when they mate with a dengue, when they mate with a Zika mosquito, the babies die. That's their promise. Well, if that's the case, why is it that since they deposited those mosquitoes in Brazil, all of a sudden you have a global pandemic on these mosquitoes now for most of you that live in america you can care less you haven't even been bit by this mosquito but i have family members in puerto rico my father had, had was bit by the chikungunya there are people that are being bit by these mosquitoes 
So it's easy for us to say, oh, drop them GMO mosquitoes, it's all good. Bill Gates, after all, endorses it. But this is the same Bill Gates that also endorses depopulation and hopes that if vaccines do a proper job, depopulation will take its course. A per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, that's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Uh, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. But there we see an increase of uh, about one point. You have to understand that these people that are in charge of this world, they're demonically possessed. They're also inspired by fallen angels to rebel against God. And fallen angels have taught humans technologies which man should not have. And man, because of its worship of the created thing, Romans 1.25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen the leaders of this world openly worshiping fallen angels the leaders of this world openly worshiping themselves attempting to be as gods attempting via transhumanism via these new organs being born in hybrids to live eternally outside of god outside of Christ the scriptures tell you and if you're a person who has backslidden I want to remind you today in John 14 6 Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the Father but by me but there's something more that it says a lot of these individuals that are promoting GMO modified mosquitoes, promoting transhumanism, promoting designer babies, promoting all of this stuff, funding cloning, funding all of these things that are abominations. They're doing so with the intent of living eternally. But John 10, 1, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. There is only one way. There is only one way. Jesus is not a way, he is the way. Do not buy into any of these transhumanism things that they always promote. It'll save lives. Well, if you want to have a true life, Turn to Jesus today. If you want to live eternally in Christ, turn to Jesus today. Because the leaders of this world are out to destroy you. They're out to eradicate you as God's creation. And Satan in return is trying to play God by creating hybrids. But he can't create hybrids, so he's trying to modify God's creation. And man in his sin of worshiping the creative thing is going with it. But don't you go with it. Don't you do it. Turn to Jesus today. May God bless you and your family. I love every single one of you greatly. No matter how far you've fallen, no matter where you're at right now in your walk, understand that God is faithful. Jesus is faithful. And he's there for you. Believe and repent. He loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to renew your family. He wants to renew your walk. Let him do so today. May God bless you and your family. If you can pray for me this Tuesday, I go for another dental procedure. And um, it'll be pretty fast and simple. But I just appreciate your prayers. And remember, on our website, we're there for you every day. If you need prayer requests, you need anything, visit our website. We love you. God bless you. Goodbye.